I would like to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, audio.com, for awesome music. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. We are standing here on the southern, the rugged southern coast, almost the southern tip of mainland Australia. And we're here to talk about the much anticipated firmware 2.0 for the Z8. It's here and it is so exciting. It is a whole lot of Z9, a whole lot of ZF, and it might, it just might have something unique to itself. All right, let's go through this real world style. G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. And yes, we've got a very exciting and a first when it comes to XP7 in the Nikon lineup. This is the first camera besides the Z9 to have a major firmware update bringing us a whole swathe of features that weren't in the camera when you bought it and you're getting all of these new features and all you have to do is download you don't have to open your wallet and as i said in the opening down there on the rugged southern coast of victoria it would have been impossible to do all of this there because the rain was coming and going the light was coming and going and quite frankly, that's a really rugged beach. And this firmware update for the Z8 is giving us some more features from the Z9 and more features from the ZF. What Nikon has let me know is that they are listening to their customers and they are trying to bring as much as they can to new firmware updates as is possible given time and resources. And let's face it, unquestionably, unquestionably, Nikon are bringing us more when it comes to firmware updates than any of their peers, any manufacturer. That is where it stands today. And this is why this is such a profound moment because it wasn't just about making the Z9 as good as possible. No, it's also about making the Z8 as good as possible. Is this a pattern and will we see more for the ZF? Who knows? I do think the higher end the camera, the more we will see features and perhaps the lower end the camera becomes, there might be less. But I still expect some updates. Probably number one on everybody's list is dedicated bird detect. This first came to the Z9 with 4.1, not that long ago, and here it is now with the Z8. And we've seen from other members of the community like Steve Perry, that the firmware 4.1 is absolutely on par with its peers. And this now comes to the Z8, which is a sub 4,000 US dollar camera. It is so much bang for your buck. We now also get auto capture. So everything that auto capture did for the Z9, it is now here in the Z8. So if you are someone that wants this from my perspective, if your use case, and, and yes, I do believe it's a niche use case, but if your use case is enhanced by auto capture, the Z8 now has it for significantly less than a Z9. And that is a massive upgrade to the Z8. Personally, for me, this next major update to the Z8, which is actually something that the Z9 does not have, Yet, who knows, pixel shift. We first saw this XP7 wise in the ZF and it has now arrived here in the Z8 2.0. Now pixel shift on 45 megapixels, getting us up around 180 megapixels. Now that's an astonishing amount of information. And of course you do have to do this on a tripod and of course, in pixel shift, like the ZF, there is a selection of 4, 8, 16, or 32 shots, which can be combined in NX Studio. If you use the 32 shot option, you not only get the resolution increase, you also get noise reduction improvements. So for those that are doing streetscapes, 
landscapes, fine art, reproductions, still life, architecture perhaps, and so much more, they now have this mode that is giving them almost 200 megapixels of resolution. Personally, this is a mode that fits my use case and I am super excited about it. In pre-release mode where you hold down the shooting trigger half, the camera is constantly buffering one second. And then when you decide the critical moment has hit, you go from half to a hold press and you go back one second in time and that is captured. You used to be able to hold the button down for 30 seconds, waiting for that bird to leave its home. That time has now been increased from 30 seconds to 300 seconds. 300 seconds or five minutes of continuous buffering. Love it. You have even more time to wait for the definitive moment and then be able to go back in time one second, get those 20 frames, and then keep shooting whatever's going on afterwards. And also like the Z9, autofocus has been improved in pre-capture to the same level as the Z9. And we have expanded N-Log ISOs. Low 2.0, which is equivalent to 200 ISO, and low 1.0, which is equivalent to 400 ISO. And if you want pre-baked slow motion, you now have that in 1080p, which is only in full HD H.264 at 30, 25, and 24 frames per second. And there is now added options to high res zoom, giving you 11 increments of speed. The ability to control high res zoom has been added to your lens control ring. I suppose in essence, making it kind of like a zoom, but instead of it being mechanical, it is digital, which is really interesting because these cameras are 8K and high res zoom works in 4K. You do have that full two times digital zoom, but you lose no quality at all. Fabulous. Don't forget audio.com, the sponsor of this video. The pro license covers distribution on any platform from YouTube monetization to local broadcast television and more. And the part I love the most is that all assets downloaded in the subscription period are for the content creator to use forever, even if they decide not to continue with their subscription. Audio.com are offering 70% off their first year's subscription, giving you the price of $59.70 US dollars for the whole year. And that is only $4.90 per month, a cup of coffee. If you're interested in accessing fantastic music to unleash your creative potential, and this is music by artists for us as artists, audio.com, use the coupon code Matt Irwin at time of subscription and you will get 70% off. And added from the ZF, we have the new picture controls, deep and flat monochrome. And something that is unique with auto capture when it comes to the Z8, you can now do auto capture in DX as well. This is something that the Z9 does not do yet. And of course, we now have rich tone portrait, which helps to try and minimize the amount of post-production required for an image. It does this by representing skin details with rich tonality while minimizing white clipping. Nikon's idea behind rich tone portrait is to look at human skin and handle it in a way which allows you to get images out of camera which are much more pleasing. Looking at contrast and looking at highlights and also smoothing skin. Now this is something that we often do in post and by having it in camera, the idea here is to potentially minimize or eliminate the need for post-production and thus speeding up the photographer's workflow and giving them more time to have fun and be creative. And there are new incremental steps for auto bracketing 1.3, 1.7, 2.3 and 2.7. And some might be super excited about there being new shutter sounds and new shutter volumes. 
Exposure delay mode has now been added with 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 3 seconds. And there has been updates to non-CPU lens data. And what that means, and it's something that I really like, is there's now finer grain control in that area. This update has added support to the Z8 for the 12 to 28 APS-C power zoom lens. An improvement in the memory card time remaining on display for video. Improvement in EVF brightness during playback. With the focus indicator display, we now have the actual distance added. Now you can choose it to be in feet or in meters. Now the focus point border, the little red box that we see when we're choosing an area of the frame, there are now three customizable thicknesses that you can choose. And increased magnification during live view up to 400%. In this first look at firmware 2.0 for the Z8, we have looked at a lot of the major highlights of this update. And there's actually so much more. These are all absolutely fantastic updates, bringing major extra features to your camera that were not there when you bought it and certainly make your camera far more useful if you're, say, a birder, if you want to do pixel shift and super large prints, or your wildlife and sports, and you need auto capture. These are genuinely useful features, updates that are free. What I love about seeing this with the Z8 is the Z8 is now on its own journey. It's bringing a great deal of parity with the Z9 and the ZF. Now, of course, I don't mind the idea of there being differentiation between the models that the Z9's always got the most and the Z8's got almost as much and obviously a ZF, which is significantly less expensive than a Z9. Well, of course, it won't and it can't have all the features because it literally does not have the same hardware. But what we're seeing here is that where it's possible, they are bringing as many features as they can and delivering just so much value to the end user. I personally don't think this is where it stops. I've talked about this many times in videos before, and I will touch on it again. It is a very exciting strategy, the idea of continuing to add features over the lifetime of a camera. For example, the Z9, if its lifetime is four years, as we've seen in the past with flagships D1, D2, D3, D4, D5 and D6, roughly four years between all of them, give or take, but the difference here is that instead of a camera coming out, a D4, or a D5 comes out and there are just minor bug fixes, there are actually brand new ideas, brand new features like auto capture being added, bringing more value, more usefulness and actually continuing to make your purchase current today. The Z9, which we're shooting on here, I purchased over two years ago, but it continues to be current. It continues to get the latest and the greatest, keeping it up to date, keeping it number one from my perspective. Now, if this same strategy is applied to, at a minimum, all of Nikon's professional cameras, and of course, we're now seeing that with the Z8, then this is a whole new way of thinking about the value of your camera and how long it's going to stay state of the art. And in this case, it might be for its entire life cycle. So instead of it's released and then it goes for four years, but in that four years, not much happens. Potentially what we're seeing here is it's released and it goes for four years, but it continues to be relevant for that entire time. It's more of a business decision as to whether once a Z9 II or a Z8 II comes out, whether the original cameras continue to be updated. And perhaps the plan is they will be where hardware permits. As we've always seen with these major updates every four years, there is usually quite a significant hardware difference, sensor sizes and processors, along with other things. So maybe a Z9 and a Z8 will continue to be updated beyond their actual life cycle, that four year, four year cycle, 
with what can be done relative to their hardware. And for those that want the latest and greatest in hardware, then yes, you go to the Z9 II and the Z8 II, etc. And certainly with the arrival of Z8 firmware 2.0, we know that Nikon is looking at the Z8 in a very similar way to how it's looking at the Z9. And that has been, the Z9 journey has been an amazing journey over the last two years. And it certainly makes Nikon users feel very confident about their investment, that it is going to stay as relevant as it possibly can for as long as it can. I'm excited. I'm very excited about what 2024 has in store because we're starting off, we're starting the year with this great release. <laughs> Who knows what's next? I mean, this is just firmware, hardware. I can't wait. Please let me know in the comments below, do you own a Z8? Are you excited about firmware 2.0? What else would you like to see? And now that you're seeing this, does this maybe inspire you to get a Z8? Keeping in mind the price point, which I don't think anybody really meets this level of power in such a small package at this price point. No one else does it. All right. It's been so good to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Bye for now. And of course, don't forget audio.com, the sponsor of this video, and your 70% discount code, Matt Irwin, when you subscribe.